This is the back of a Yamaha receiver and if you've ever wondered what all these different ports do that's what this video is about. All these speaker ports there we're not going to get into because that was the last video so if you're wondering about what those how those hook up go ahead and look up the last video and that'll explain everything. Now you have here obviously is your power so you plug your power connector and it's the same kind of plug as a computer cable and uh, now it has power even though it's not turned on see it has power but these do not have power those only turn on when you um, turn on your receiver so I can plug in a DVD player or whatever other equipment and when I turn on my receiver it'll turn these on too it's very handy so also it frees up outlets it gives you some more room if you're cramped for some space Right here is a little holder for a wrench if you had one, if it didn't get lost. That's used to tighten all these nuts. This is your uh, AM antenna. And those look like this. Just a loop. This is a FM antenna and it's uh, just a regular coax connector. Put it right in there to grab your FM signal. Now although it looks like a ton of different hookups and it looks very confusing, with the uh, invention of HDMI that really frees up a, a lot of cables. You don't need separate audio cables. HDMI have audio built in and if your TV is advanced it might have something called HDMI ARC and HDMI ARC stands for um, Audio Return Channel. This is an HDMI connector looks like that on the end and plugs in real simply. Again, it carries audio and video, so you only need one cable right to your TV. Now, if your TV has the HDMI ARC labeled on that port, use that use that port. This receiver has three other inputs of HDMI. I can plug in whatever I want, but here they're labeled DVD, uh, DTV, or cable slash satellite. And that just helps me on the front when I'm turning the knob to put it to the right setting so I know I'm at each one of these when I plug it in. Now here you have remote in and out. Now what this does is controls two different zones. Um, let's say you want to use a remote somewhere else in your house and your infrared remote. Well you can plug in one of these and then you have to uh, run the, the wire. But it just looks like a regular headphone jack. and this now will pick up a remote signal. So anyway, that's how those work. And right next to it you have the dock port. Now this is for a separate piece of equipment that you can plug in and hold your iPod or things like that. That's XM satellite radio. This is a network plug if you want to ho hook it into your home network. It uses a, just a regular network plug like this, a Cat5. And you plug it in your hub or router and you can communicate back with your computer. So next to that are these orange coaxial cable inputs. You have three of them. Now it's digital input. This is a digital audio signal. Now they're orange. They look just like these that are different colors. And the cables can be different colors as well. You have a red and orange. Now the the colors only help you when you're hooking things up. They don't make, there's no difference in the cable itself. So you can use any color, it's just a convenience thing. But there is a difference in the quality. You can see how thin these cables are, and these are standard cheap cables. Here's some nicer ones. There's a thicker gauge wire in there. These are just Radio Shack. Or your more expensive ones, like your Monsters, will be much more high quality than these. You can see the difference in the thickness of the wire there. Now these are usually plated with a nicer metal, sometimes gold, and they're all labeled for convenience as well. They even come all connected together for your different options. This is component video and audio all together. I'll tell you more about that in a second, but uh, you can get a pretty good picture even from these. So here you can input up to three digital audio with those uh, cables I just showed you. Or you can do fiber optic. Fiber optics are awesome cables. You can get them pretty long as well. 
that look like that. Take this little cap off and just insert it. They work great, they sound great. And that's how those are. The inputs and outputs are all labeled, but that's just for convenience. You can hook up whatever you want to each one. You don't need to hook up a tape player if it says tape player. These are out. These can go back to your tape player. So if you want to record on a cassette tape, I don't know who would, then you can do that through here. Or you can uh, send audio back to your CDR device. Down here you have uh, controller options if you want to hook up separate equipment. That's what this is too. This is a regular computer cable that you might see. looks like this if you're hooking it up to additional equipment. Most people don't ever use those. You have a lot more audio inputs as well. You can plug in a record player, CD player, CDR. gives you a lot of options for all of that. Okay, all of these audio inputs are in and outs. So right down here you see multi-channel input, it says. And some DVD players that don't have HDMI might just have separate audio outs for each speaker. So you'd plug one end of these into your DVD player. That would be the surround left and the surround right. And then that would take the signal, amplify it, and send it out to your speakers. So you would plug in all of your speakers there. Now next to it here you can see it says pre-out. Pre-out means um, not amplified. So you have your subwoofer which is just a regular signal. It doesn't have any real strength to it. It is um, saying that it's assuming you're going to hook it up to a subwoofer that has an amplifier built into the actual speaker. So those are the ones you need to plug into a wall. And a pre-amplified center speaker. All of the other um, speakers have that as well. And here's a zone output. Zone 2 and zone 3. If you have um, other signals you want to send to different rooms, different places, you can do that here. That's the uh, audio. You know, you can have different options there. So ranking video signals from best to worst, your first option is always HDMI if you can. If anything has an HDMI, use that. It's the best. Next, component. Really good video signal and picture quality. It plugs in. You need three cables for one video picture. Then after that, if you don't have that, SVHS is the best. Now, SVHS plugs in up here. I threw all mine away. I really never used that, but that's still better than if you had to use just a regular uh, component video cable. Now, these are still better than this. Now, if you're still using this, you're probably not watching this video. So here we have a DVD player on top of the receiver, and the DVD player has an HDMI out, so that's what you would want to hook up. But if you didn't have that, you could hook up the component video cables. This is out, and they would go in right here. And that just gives you the video. You would also need to hook up your audio. Or, if you just had your video out, you would hook it up to one of these connectors here. Now this section is just to give you more options of things to hook up. You can hook up an old DVD player here, all your equipment. You can hook up a VCR here, and VCRs need an out as well because they can record, so you can send information out if it says out. A couple DV or VCRs. And then here's uh, just an extra monitor you can send out. It just gives you even more signals. So anyway, I think we've covered everything. Um, yeah. Now, might as well go ahead and look at the front, because on the front there's one other plug here that you might be really interested in. All right, here you have what's called a um, optimizer mic. And what that is, is it looks like this little thing here. You plug that in. This is just a temporary setup thing. You plug that little, uh, looks like a headphone jack, in, and you lead this cord all the way to about the middle of the room. Wherever you're going to sit is where you would put this. And you would run the setup here, and it, your speakers would emit a sound that this picks up. And it can tell, okay, this speaker's too quiet, this one's too loud, and it will adjust all your speakers appropriately so you have the best audio setup possible. 
Anyway, that's about it for all the ports and, and options on the back. If this video has helped you, oh, I'm glad. If you have any uh, helpful comments, if I got anything wrong or misled anybody, please uh, let us all know. And always uh, like if you can and subscribe. That'd be great. So thanks for watching. Bye.